All right, so we're gonna look at how we can use Fig Jam for a back channel. So of course, there's a lot of different ways we can do it. The main thing though, is we need to have a way for students to place our, we want a little organization where students can place their answers or questions or however we want them to interact with what we're doing in the classroom at the time. The whole point of this is just to give students another way to interact with what we're doing in the classroom in a way that may best fit them, where they may not be feel comfortable raising their hand in class or asking questions out loud. A digital back channel oftentimes allow them to be more engaged in the learning because they're able to participate in the way that was not offered to them before. So there's a lot of different um, you know, templates we can start here. I really think the retrospective can work with that. I think also the brainstorm, I'm actually gonna go with the retrospective. I'm gonna kind of show why. Uh, we're going to, you know, we may have like say, uh, up here we'll just say whatever the major topic is. And you know what, I don't like this, you know, this font style. We're just gonna go a little more technical. I think that's a little easier to read. Uh, the cursive style can actually be difficult for some students with forms of dyslexia. Uh, so, all right, so what we're gonna do here is that we can go through and where you kind of see where we have this here, we could have like big question one, and this could be, you know, I could actually place the question here, whatever topic we're talking about. So like in a physics class, maybe I have a question. I want them to kind of guess what the solution is going to be like, what would happen to the amount of friction if we double the weight of the object type thing. Um, so I'll just put my big questions up here. You know, I'll think ahead of time, where are those big questions when you get to? It's okay if students know those ahead of time. They're not secrets that. And now if with the post-it notes in here, this is where students could be placing their answers. So they could put, you know, student A could put their solution. So they put their possible solution there. And one of the nice things is that if somebody comes along here, they can actually, you know, they can see what it is. We could actually kind of add in, in our post-it note below it. So if we want to add in our own little thing here, um, I know there are different ways I can edit this, you know, and, you know, there's different things I could do inside of that. So I'm just going to put in my possible questions there. Now, this is great because now I could ask the questions in class. I could have students put their answers. And of course, as they edit, I'm going to see their name down here. Who left that answer so I can talk with the kids there. One thing I want to do here, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Don't forget, you can only zoom out. Um, yes, there's more boxes here. I'm going to take one of these and I'm just going to copy it. Oh, I didn't want to do that, but actually I'll move it down here. And I always like to place one and we'll place this along the whole bottom here. Um, and this is where we all do it this way. So I drop it a little bit so you can tell that that's different. Now, if I hold down shift, I can select multiple of these post notes at a time so I can move them all at once. And, you know, this is where we're just going to do. We'll put in here. What questions do you have? So this is where they could be putting in their questions as we move throughout. Now, as a teacher, while I'm conducting class, I can have this open on a screen in front of me and I can be looking at this. I can be seeing as students are participating on that. Of course, the first couple times you do this, you're going to want to talk about how are you modeling this? How are you um, explaining what they can do? You know, you want to keep an eye on this. So if you see students who are not acting appropriately, you have a chance to kind of interact on, engage on that and teach them the proper way to do it. Remember, students don't always know the proper way to engage. We have to teach it, we have to model it, and we have to reteach it. Now, one last thing I kind of want to show here is that one thing that you could be doing with that is teaching students how to leave comments on this. So I kind of already engaged up here. You can see this little bubble here. If I click this bubble here, or if I just hit the letter C on my keyboard, um, I can now go and put on something and I can add in comments. So students could be responding, possible answers to that, and I'll be able to see that. I will be able to, you know, check if this is a good comment or not. I want students to be able to try to answer each other's questions. You know, that's part of that collaborative learning aspect. Students can be asking questions. They can be answering questions to each other, trying to explain it their own way. But I want to be able to teach this to them too, so show them how to do it. So again, that's a little bubble up here in the upper left, or I hit C on the keyboard to get into commenting mode. And if I want to, I can undo that, and I should be able to just leave it as normal. So at this point, you know, the last thing I remind you to do is you do have to share it with the students, make it so they can edit. Uh, so I would keep a template that they can't edit, keep that separate, and then just make a different copy for each class, or you can have one copy for all your class if you have multiple sections of the same class. So this is an easy way to do some collaborative back channeling in your classroom using a fig jam.